How you guys doing? Welcome to the show today. It's Stock Markets with Bruce. Uncle Bruce here. Welcome one, welcome all to the channel today. Welcome to today, Thursday, May the 13th, 2021. And what is happening today? Let's talk about it. We are going higher. We have had uh, an interesting week this week, today being Thursday. We've had yesterday the Dow drop 600 odd points. Uh, we had a day before that was not so great. But we've got a turnaround going on right now. And it was led by the NASDAQ exchange, uh, all the listings, uh, FANG listings, really. About uh, an hour ago, half an hour ago, it began. Uh, Apple turned positive. Amazon got a nice upgrade. It turned positive. And we've got an uptick going across the board. The NASDAQ right now is showing a 79 point uh, up uptick 79 point gain for the index on the pre-market right now in the futures futures are showing s p up 10 and a half points and we're showing the dow now up eight points the dow is the last index to turn positive uh we were negative 150 points an hour ago on the dow we were negative almost 70 80 points on nasdaq we were definitely negative 10 or 20 on s p that has all been erased Bargain hunters have shown up, and I was wondering last night in the last hour of trading, would bargain hunters come into this market at the end of the day and pick off deals as the end of day was, was winding down? Because that is usually in the last 30 minutes the opportunity where you scoop up cheap stock at the end of the day where people are just throwing in the towel and throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, you scoop up the deals because the next morning people realize, why did I sell my stock for? What, what, what kind of an idiot am I? Uh, how did I think Apple wasn't going to make money next year? How did I think that Amazon was going to go to business? What, what's wrong with me? Um, people are just uh, so overreacting to this so-called, oh, inflation is terrible. Oh, give me a break, uh, you. 4% uh, inflation. Give me a break. I get, I get so angry and I'm so disappointed. And then I'm not surprised. I just, I just sit back and I... I, I blow up a little and then I, I chortle at it. I laugh at it because um, uh, people think the end of the world uh, that because inflation has popped up. Well, why do you think there's inflation? You think maybe there's a shortage of stuff? Could that be it? Gee, no kidding, Sherlock. There's a shortage of stuff. Uh, we are in the middle of a, well, what is it we're in the middle of? A pandemic? Oh, my God. It's a worldwide pandemic. Happens every year, doesn't it? Unbelievable how people just lose their sense of normalcy and become stupid. Um, good news for you guys. If you're watching me, I hope you're watching and you're listening and you're paying attention. You don't sell in the middle of a sell-off. You buy in the middle of a sell-off. You sell when everybody wants to buy. You buy when everybody wants to sell. This is the secret to the market. Uh, those who play that uh, game actually win in the end. Um, and they win all the time, actually. Uh, they win all the time. Uh, but those of you who want to make money, you want to make some money, uh, wake up to reality. And uh, the reality is this. Stocks are oversold. They have gone way too far down, way too far, way too fast. And we've got a turnaround happening here. And you might miss it. Um, a week from now, a month from now, you might be sitting back going, what was I doing? Why did I, why did I pick up on the dip? Why don't I ever buy on the dip? The reason is it's the hardest thing to do. Hardest thing to do in life is to buy when everyone else is selling or when you are positive and the rest of the world is not so sure and negative and you let yourself get affected by that. You've got the charge ahead, baby. That's what you got to do. Though You got some headwind? Lean into it. Let's go. Uh, buck up and get with the program. Um, the NASDAQ is up 71 now. S&P is eight, up eight points in the pre-market. The Dow is down 11. That is a good thing. These market num these numbers are good. Does this mean it's a guarantee that the market is going to open up high and go high all day long? No, there's no guarantee whatsoever. But I can tell you the sentiment has absolutely turned around. Even though overnight we saw Asia and Europe go down in value, their stocks went down because they were just catching up to the rest of us from a couple of days ago. America has already turned it around. The North American markets have already looked forward and gone, this is a nothing burger. This is a nothing burger. We're moving ahead here. Um, a 1.69 a 10 year note, a 1.7 year note, 1.7% um, uh, interest rate to the US government for 10 years. Is this the end of the economy? Come on, what are you talking about? Normal interest rates right now should be 4.5%. That's what the 10 year should be right now. That's normal. 
we're nowhere near normal. We have got so much cash going into this system. This economy is going to continue to grow as as much as you're hearing all the negatives about the economy apparently and supply problems and all this stuff. The bottom line is the economy is struggling because it's picking up steam and coming on. And uh, it's turning back on again. We're going through these growing pains to get a company running, counting me running. Maybe a stupid question, Uncle Bruce, but do you hold any of the current stock you talk about? Nope. I don't own a single share of any public company. Not a single one. I don't have any money in any stock that I talk about. Never have. I've gone on the air um, uh, last summer with this channel and started making videos. Um, covered the GameStop story back in June of last year when it was 480 a share. Uh, covered Tesla, covered Apple, uh, the markets in general, talked about how the markets work in, in plain English. Um, and then I started going live <clears throat> on, on January the 25th of this year. I started going live every day during the market when GameStop started to go. And, uh, and I was finding that uh, so many of you out there were not aware or not understanding or not sure of what was happening. And you were asking really basic questions about the market that a stockbroker should be answering on for you uh, on your behalf, but you, you can't find one. And I, I can understand why you don't have enough money. You don't have the kind of millions they want or or you're not going to be you're not going to be attracted by uh, you're not going to be <clears throat> uh, uh, attractive enough to some of the big investment firms that, you know, they'll want you to have a million dollars before they'll talk to you kind of thing. And so I began to go live and um, and I've never owned any stock. And and I've mentioned it again and again that I will not own stock uh, when I'm doing this, uh, doing this, because um, I don't want to have a conflict of interest with any of you. Is it possible for IPOE to squeeze? No. And when, when we use this word squeeze, Steve, you got to be careful how you use this word, because a lot of you don't understand what a stock squeeze really means. Uh, there's there's various levels of stock squeeze. There can be a squeeze for like an hour. There can be a squeeze for a half a day. There can be a squeeze on one short seller only and the rest of the market. There can be a squeeze against many sellers of stock and the whole market. There can be a slow motion stock squeeze that can last weeks. Um, some squeezes only move a market five or ten percent but they hold a stock at a certain level for a long long time um not all stock squeezes are the same and not all of them will result in a stock going uh up 100 percent or 300 percent or 10 times the amount of money that's not what that what that is that's they're definitely not they're never the same there there are no two stock squeezes identical to each other in in every aspect so IPOE, there's a short position on it. Yes. Um, how many short? I last saw 25 and a half million approximately shorted out of uh, 80 million shares. 31.9%. Um, if that were to be go reduced by half, that would probably re would be it for the squeeze. Uh, because for, uh, 20, uh, for 10, 12 million shares to exist on short sales to exist on this stock is no a no brainer no it's no big deal um and so there isn't going to be a hundred million shares of desperate buying coming into ipoe because of a short squeeze i don't see it i just don't see it what i see coming into ipoe social uh, uh, uh sofi social financial sofi will be a brand name that now will be world globally known as a new stock under the symbol of sofi on the uh, New York Stock Exchange, which used to be the IPOE that you own now, <clears throat> and this stock will become a very heavily promoted and talked about stock, and um, and the company will be growing dramatically, uh, and that's where you're going to make your money. It's it's just going to be on the fundamentals of SoFi, but SoFi is growing at light speed right now, and that's why I think the shares, there's a twenty to thirty dollar deal here or higher, a twenty dollar thirty dollar trading range or more on this stock in the not too distant future and that's why at 1520 yeah it's a deal I'd, I'd pick this up uh if it goes to 1380 would i be upset and throw in the towel uh, i'd be upset but i wouldn't be throwing in the towel and how upset would i be i'd be going what happens stocks go up and down this stock has been 1750 
since we heard about this deal on Friday that it's closing, closing before the end of this month. So welcome to today. We're at 15.22 on SoFi, or our IPOE right now, and it's traded 64,000 in the pre-market. So there you go. There's no stock coming in for sale here. Um, I think you're going to make money. And would you buy, uh, Bruce, would you buy physical metals as investment? No, nope, I would not buy physical metals. I would not buy gold bars, silver. Uh, no, I would buy the paper, uh, buy the digital representation only. Um, if you're going to buy gold, you want to buy a gold stock that pays a dividend. So buy a mining company that pays a cash dividend. That's what you want. That's how you invest in gold. You get paid to hold. And if you can write call options against that stock, even better. Now you're using gold to make you money while you're holding it. You've got dead money if you're holding gold bars. Your money is dead. Uh, if you've got silver bars, you're dead. Uh, the reason is that this item, this thing, will not return you any money while you have it. Um, if you own gold mining stock instead, and you can easily Google up the you know the best dividend paying gold mining stocks uh, in the world, easily done. Um, if you can write call options against it and bring in dividend income against, it, at least you're making your money work for you on top of holding the commodity via a gold mine and that type of thing, and operating producing gold mine. That's the way I think you should go. Some of you out there. Um, are, I bet you there are some of you out there who are already figuring this out, that if you bought AMC at 10 something dollars a share um, or converted what you had into some AMC and then write call contracts against it, if you can bring in 12 to 14% a month in, in uh, premium revenue on your AMC or, or also on GameStop, as I've been talking about in, ad nauseum, you can bring in 12 to 15% a month from your stock portfolio on option premiums. Uh, some of you are figuring out, wow, that's that's like a lot of money. That I hadn't thought of that. Um, uh, there are people out there who are who are sitting on fifty thousand dollar accounts who are bringing in one percent a year, uh, and the banks love you for it. They just love you guys because you are allowing them to make ten times that much money off of your money. Um, but uh, some of you out there are figuring out, boy, if I take uh, if I take uh, some cash and I buy uh, three hundred shares of GameStop. Uh, under fifty thousand dollars, I can have three hundred shares of GameStop, and I don't. And that's I own them. There's no margin here. I own them outright. I can write three call contracts on on GameStop. Now, if you can bring in you know seventy cents a day in premium money, fifty cents a day in premium money on three hundred shares, th this starts to add up. Uh, this starts to add up to a lot of money. Um, you have a thousand shares of GameStop. You can really bring in some cash, and uh, uh, you gotta you gotta. You, you, I cannot stand it when I see people giving away opportunity that's just being handed to you on a silver platter. Uh, and uh, the idea of, oh, I'm going to lose my stock if they take it from me. Not going to happen. They're going to buy your stock from you if they want it. They have to pay you for yourself. Plus, you got your premium money. Just buy the stock back and write options all over again at a higher price. It's so simple, but you got to get over this fear thing uh, this 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 uh, this thing anyway i get it uh it it's um i know exactly where we're coming from i've done this a million times before with my uh, my peeps and uh i'm more than happy to talk to you about it and we'll figure it out together just let me know uh if you'd like to get together we'll we'll get together and we'll we'll go over your game plan we'll go over your exact situation and try to find out a way to make this work for you perfectly thank you everybody for uh for that, if you'd like to talk to me about a one-hour session, you want to get together with me, send me an email through uh, my email address, which is right here. It's the old school hotmail.com email address. Send me an email. Say, Bruce, I'd like to talk to you on a one-on-one -on -one session. When can you book me in? I'd like to, uh, I'd like to make a reservation and, and, and lock it in right away.